currently we have 1,869 tests that are pending. For those of you who are awaiting test results for COVID-19, please check the Ministry of Health's online portal or the link on our website. Please remember that while you are awaiting your results, you must remain in self-isolation. I will now share the most current case counts. There are 71,157 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Canada and 20,907 cases in Ontario. Chatham-Kent has 90 cases and Sarnia-Lambton has reported 204 cases. Michigan now has 48,021 cases with 9,897 cases being in Detroit. Today, we are reporting 745 cases of COVID-19 in our community, an increase of 13 cases from yesterday. 39% of our cases have occurred in long-term care homes, including both residents and staff. 300 cases are resolved, 25 people are in hospital. 17% of our cases are between the ages of 20 and 29 years, 15% of our cases are between the ages of 50 and 59, and 20% of our cases are 80 years and older. 43% are male and 56% are female, and 1% is unknown at this time. Our community has lost a total of 62 people to COVID. 47 deaths have occurred among residents in long-term care and retirement homes. Our health unit is working with 17 long-term care and retirement homes that are currently experiencing a COVID-19 outbreak. Testing for COVID-19 is based on a clinical assessment. Common symptoms include fever, a new or worsening cough, and shortness of breath. However, other symptoms may be present, such, such as a sore throat, unexplained fatigue, an increase in falls, nausea, vomiting, chills, and headaches. If you are feeling unwell and need to seek a health assessment for COVID-19, there are several options. Complete the online self-assessment tool available at Ontario.ca, contact Telehealth Ontario, or call your primary care provider for a phone or virtual assessment. To access a local health care provider, walk-in clinic, or virtual medical assessment, please visit eHealthWindsorEssex.ca. Windsor Essex has two COVID-19 assessment centers, Erie Shores Healthcare in Leamington and Windsor Regional Hospital Olet Campus. Please note that testing is available for people who have symptoms of COVID-19. Please continue to visit WeChu.org for the most current information and case counts. I will now turn it over to Dr. Wajid Ahmed, our Medical Officer of Health, for further updates regarding COVID-19. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I regret to report the death of a man in his 60s who passed away yesterday related to COVID-19. I'm sorry for his family and would like to express my condolences for their loss. As we prepare for additional announcements from the Premier's office related to the reopening of the province, I would like to remind all residents to continue to practice and follow public health guidance, in particular uh, for, uh, around our older adults and seniors. Older adults and people with chronic medical conditions are at a higher risk for more severe COVID-19 symptoms, including death. And we have seen that with the numbers in our community. Due to a weakened immune system, it is more challenging for older adults to fight off infectious diseases. Chronic diseases like diabetes, cancer, and heart diseases are also more common in this age group, making them more vulnerable to serious complications. In Windsor, Essex, we have a higher proportion of seniors and individuals living with chronic conditions compared to the rest of the province. We all, are, we all are doing more to help keep our families and, their, and ourselves safe from contracting the COVID-19 virus. Public health guidance, such as hand hygiene, 
monitoring for any symptoms, practicing physical distancing, and limiting close contact with those outside your house are the most effective ways to prevent COVID-19. In Ontario, those over the age of 65 and individuals who are immunocompromised are advised to self-isolate. This means limiting interaction with others, including your family members who do not live with your house. Now is not the time to start visiting other people in person, especially your older uh, parents or grandparents. Limiting Limited social gatherings to those in your own household minimizes the potential of community spread of COVID-19. This is especially important for those that are at the highest risk. Again, these are the seniors and people either who have a chronic medical conditions. To maintain your health and protect yourself, older adults and individuals with chronic medical conditions, you are advised to stay connected with your loved ones and friends over the phone or through virtual means. Work with your healthcare provider to ensure you have a supply of necessary medication. Use delivery services or curbside pickup options such as, as, as much as possible, or arrange for someone to run essential errands for you. Get adequate sleep, maintain a healthy diet, and stay active. Keep physical distancing from others at all times. I understand that staying isolated from friends and family is particularly challenging during such a distressing time. As excitement around the opening of businesses mounts, you may be thinking it is okay to get together. I would like to urge caution to all the residents and in particular our seniors to continue to limit social gatherings, essential trips to stores and maintain physical distancing. These steps combined with proper hand hygiene are the most effective way to protect yourself and others during this pandemic. We're all in this together. We have to be working together to protect and limit the spread of COVID-19 in our community. Thank you. We'll now take questions from the media. We'll start with Windsor. Uh, just a question about yesterday's um, uh, statement about uh, lakeside produce and the cases there. Um, there were a number of comments on social media questioning why that was released uh, now sort of in the middle of May rather than in early April when the outbreak began there. So the reason that we issued that media statement is obviously around the heightened awareness about the safety of these workplaces and the number of people who are contracting the disease in that population. Uh, we wanted to assure the community that we have been working with these farms for, for quite some time and we have had cases in this population and uh, we have been working with uh, all the farms that uh, have cases, especially this one would have uh, the highest number of cases, at least in our region, 13 cases and uh, we were able to track down all of these cases and all of these cases are close contacts of each other there is no risk of uh, spread in the community or even in the at the farm the farm is cooperating with us so we have all that information and we just wanted to provide more reassurance to the community that we are uh, in close contact and working with this uh, with these farms any questions from the Windsor Star I'm okay for now, thank you. Any questions, questions from CBC? Uh, yes, we have been talking uh, with a few people who have, are pushing to reopen churches. Do you have any concerns about people returning to uh, religious practice? So I think it will have to go back to what the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act dictates. Right now, there is a limit on how uh, these uh, services are being operated. So we'll have to go with the provincial direction on that. At this point, I think the best option is to continue with your religious practices uh, at your home or uh, in a safe way without uh, breaking the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act guidance. If that changes, then uh, there will be maybe there will be uh, more flexibility in terms of where people can practice their faith. At this point, we are just following what the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act is uh, is guiding us. <coughs> Your concerns, that's basically what you said earlier about seniors being very vulnerable still. 
And that is why I say that right now it is in place, and uh, we will still make that recommendation. But uh, recognizing that uh, these uh, places of worship is not only visited by seniors, but by everyone. So we'll have to really take a good look at it. But the bottom line still stays that as we are seeing more and more people outside in the community, that doesn't mean that the crisis is over and we have to let our guards down. It is even more important now when you are interacting outside with more people outside that you must follow some of those guidance, and especially those who are at a higher risk of developing and contracting some of these uh, complications associated with COVID. So it is, that's why we, we, we want to take it back to the basics of what is important that everyone need to be aware of. And uh, it's not over. People still need to follow some of those guidance. So don't uh, get distracted by the number of people that you see in the street or the number of cars that you see outside. The risk is still there. And uh, we like to keep it contained the way we have been doing for the last two months. I think uh, two months or longer. We still need to do practice all the same practices that we are doing right now. Okay, thank you. Any questions from Blackburn? Would you say the risk is greater now than we perhaps what it was um, in the beginning, or is the beginning of the car because of the still not those travel bans and things like that? So your question, I think uh, I'm having a difficulty in hearing you. Are you asking about the probable cases? Just the, the level of risk right now. You're saying, you know, people are going out, they're seeing more people out, they're thinking perhaps this is, um, you know, not as much of a risk as it once was, but um, we have more confirmed cases in the region, more current cases in the region now than what we had even at the beginning of the pandemic. So all I can say is there is, like, a, if, if you're really looking at it from a risk perspective, the risk probably hasn't changed in the last, uh, I guess, few weeks. It still exists. It has not gone down. The good news is it, it hasn't gone up, which is, a, I think, a good sign. The risk could have gone up, and instead of seeing 10 cases on an average, we could be seeing like 50 cases or 60 cases, 70 cases every day. So we are not there yet. So I, I cannot say that the risk has increased, uh, but the risk hasn't gone down as well either. What we need to focus on is how, what are we doing to keep either the risk at the same level or even less than what we have right now. And all these measures and recommendations that we are uh, putting forward is to either keep the risk at the same level or even reduce it. Some of these measures, if people are following actively, it should help to reduce the risk. Right now, I think the risk is still the same. It hasn't changed. The good news is it hasn't increased. So just, there's just difference. Uh, it's uh, reopening things doesn't mean that the risk has gone down. The risk is still there, and it can change very quickly. When more people are outside, there are more infection. The likelihood of anyone contracting or coming in contact with the case would be high, and that would definitely lead to a higher risk in the community. Right now, the risk has been stabilized, but we like to see it going down. Any questions from CTV? Uh, yeah, with the impending announcement tomorrow as, as we enter stage one, uh, I know marinas have been getting ready, golf courses have been getting ready. I know all those people are itching to get back to, you know, to doing what they love to do. What are your concerns heading into this, uh, this first phase? I think the biggest concern is still is the, the perception. And I think that's what I am uh, trying to address is, People need to know what this means. It doesn't mean that the risk has gone down, the risk has decreased, the risk is still there. I think we are getting a better handle on how we are managing some of these cases and how people are, uh, all, all these cases and contacts are being followed up. We are seeing a decline in the community spread, which is good, but when you have more people outside, the likelihood of community spread increases too. So I think it's just a matter of how do you balance some of those risks with the measures that we are the, that we are recommending, versus the the gradual reopening of people coming out from uh, their um, their homes and uh, spending more times outdoor. If we can if we can follow those guidance while still enjoy some of the outdoor activities, 
and uh, and uh, as the economy opens up and people are visiting those stores, following the same guidance, you know, maintaining physical distancing, going only when you need to. It's not a place that you should be uh, just go for window shopping. So maybe spend some more time and give it a more thought that, yes, we need to be outside. We need to be engaged. We need to be connected. But what are the best ways we can do that without putting ourselves at risk? So I think that's the direction that we want to remind that uh, it's uh, opening doesn't mean that the risk has gone away. No, it hasn't. It just means that you need to be extra careful because now you, you're, you have more chances of coming in contact with other people and making sure that you are really, really clear in your mind what precautions you need to take and when you're interacting with others, what you need to do to safe protect yourself and also your family. Um, just as a sidebar, uh, 300 resolutions so far. Just wondering uh, if any of those are from St. Clair College, have any of those cases been resolved? And if so, because I've heard that they are stuck there pretty much until this pandemic is done because they can't return to their homes. Is that, is that true or false? So some conversations, so by definition, um, we will consider them as resolved, but the challenge is the homes that where they are coming from are the homes are currently in outbreak. And uh, in order to, to limit the ability of the home to manage all those individuals in their facility, there has to be some consideration that how we can, uh, we can safely make that transfer. I'm aware of some, that some of the conversation are happening from the St. Clair College to maybe not going back to the home, but to uh, uh, the uh, subacute hospital, uh, the, the Hotel du Grace Healthcare. So some patients are being transferred there too. So there are some innovative ways that uh, that we that we are doing to uh, as a system to uh, to provide that kind of level of support. But to answer your question, I think it really depends on the facility. And right now. We know that the facility is still under outbreak, and some of these conversation, uh, when it happens, we'll have to take all of those factors into consideration before a transfer has happened. Any questions? questions from AM800? There's been a lot of talk lately about children at risk, and the province issued a statement this morning in reference to the Kawasaki syndrome and whether there's a link with COVID. What can you say about that, and how much at risk are our children? So everyone is at risk, uh, for sure. I think there is the the risk is uh, them, and and the biggest challenge when we are talking about children is their ability to self isolate or to follow the, some of the guidance that uh, many of uh, the adults follow. And uh, for them, if they are coming in contact with someone or a suspect person with COVID, the likelihood of them contracting the disease would be high. So from a, that risk. It is a high risk, but uh, not anything different other than their behavior uh, only. When it comes to Kawasaki-like uh, disease, I think the the risk is uh, it's still it's being uh, um, studied at this point. We don't know for sure if it is linked with COVID. The biggest challenge, what we are, are some of the studies that we have seen is people when they are presenting with uh, some of these unusual symptoms. So Kawasaki disease is, is, a, is a kind of a vasculitis. So it's an inflammatory reaction to the small vessels of the, uh, uh, of the body. Uh, and uh, the children under the age of five years are more, most, uh, most likely impacted by it. And when that happens, and if uh, the suspicion is with respect to what triggered it, there has been some uh, viral uh, etiology to it. So some, some viruses cause this type of triggering system. And then the concern is maybe COVID has triggered that. But when these children are swabbed for COVID or with using the nasopharyngeal swabs, it will come back as negative. So you don't have really a system to say whether they're actively infected. But then when antibody testing was done, it showed positive for COVID-19. So that means they contracted the disease earlier on. They cleared it, but their body is still re uh, reacting to some of those triggers and leading to this inflammation of the vessels that is causing the Kawasaki disease. So it is, uh, it is uh, 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 currently being studied right now. We don't have a lot of information, but uh, when we get to the antibody testing and when we have the antibody testing available in our community, I think it would be, it would be really important for us to look at, uh, look at all the cases that we have, uh, especially with uh, some concerns of Kawasaki disease or any other type of vasculitic uh, reaction that we are seeing in not only in the children, but also in older adults. 
Do we know what the youngest case is locally? There's 10 between the ages 0 and 19, but what's the youngest case? Do we know? I don't have that number right in front of me. I apologize. We'll probably we can share that on our Friday update. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions from Windsor? Uh, yeah, the problem, Trump province announced this morning um, that Canadian Armed Forces personnel have been deployed to five long-term care homes across the province. Um, is that in, in, in Windsor or Essex County by any chance? Uh, none at the Windsor Essex County Health Unit. We were in contact with our local regiment and uh, had some preliminary conversation and uh, some of the discussion around what would trigger us to to uh, request help from them. So uh, they are there, uh, and uh, we can reach out to, for their assistance as needed. But uh, there is no one deployed, at least in our area, uh, in any of the long-term care home. Any further questions from Windsor Star? Did the man in his 60s who pass, passed away have underlying medical conditions? Uh, yes, I believe. I don't have that detail, but yeah, they have underlying medical condition that led to the death. And the majority of people who have passed away have had underlying medical conditions. That's still the case? That is still the case, yes.